Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Red, where have you been? Oh, uh, well, I'll just explain that in a bit. <clears throat> Apologies if I sound weird. I feel awful. I woke up and just felt crap. I don't know why. Anyway, today I'm finally going to get around to doing my Leopard 2K review video. Um, I did the first impressions video a while ago now, and... Really, I need to get my ass into gear and do a few more videos. I know you guys have not been getting a lot of content on my channel recently. The H1Z1 video did not do as well as I'd hoped, but um, I figured it was better than nothing, especially as I was going away last weekend. All of this week, I've been... Well, actually, all of this week, I've been off. I haven't been working this week, um, which you'd think would be, you know, great for my video making but unfortunately because some of the family are also not working this week it means that I don't have the house free to myself like I do now of course I could try and record videos while there is somebody else here but I'd be constantly getting asked to do things whilst recording and it would just become a ball ache for me and everybody else involved and it wouldn't be particularly fun for you guys because you could hear voices in the background because believe me there is no way in hell you'd get them to be quiet but I digress Let's take a look at the Leopard 2K. So, let's start with the stat sheet. 120mm Rheinmetall L44 cannon with 41, 41 rounds of ammunition. A 20mm RH202 cannon on the roof for uh, shooting down those pesky aircraft. And a 7.62 MG3A1 machine gun, which is basically just a modified version of the modified version of the MG42. 26.5 degrees per second turret rotation speed, pretty quick, I think you'll agree. 9 degrees of gun depression, 20 degrees of elevation, very good for sniping over ridge lines. 7.9 second reload rate, that will get faster, my loader is not fully upgraded yet. Hull armor, we'll get onto it in a minute. Tank weighs 50 tons and has a 1,327 horsepower engine, which is great for horsepower per ton max speed is 70 kilometers an hour i've seen 50 kilometers an hour on tarmac i have never seen 70. Um, generally speaking you'll be doing around 40 kilometers per hour on rough ish terrain so grass mud etc although thick mud obviously you'll slow to about 20 if you're lucky so let's take a look at the armor yeah we'll do the armor Ooh, wrong button yeah we'll do the armor first because uh I normally do the modifications straight afterwards, but we'll do the armor this time. So, there is no reactive armor or composite armor on this tank. This is all you get. 59mm on the lower front plate. The upper front plate is 50mm, but sloped at a 75 degree angle, giving you 162mm of effective thickness. 175 there. You would think that AP... Well, you'd think that um, heat rounds would go straight through this. You'd think so, but that's not always what I've experienced. And most tanks in the game are going to be firing armor-piercing, discarding, fin-stabilized Sabo at you anyway. So this is pretty much an autom automatic bounce zone for all intents and purposes. You can get penetrated through the front of this plate, but if you're angled, say around a corner like that, and something hits you there... Yeah, it, it may pen, but there's no guarantee that it's actually going to hit anything when it goes through your tank, because it will just go straight through. Front of the turret, 33mm there, 33 there, 33, 38, 38, side of the turret, 38, but really, really good slope, 125mm, about same on this side as well ish um this is spaced armor around the gun mantlet by the way not that it will matter much because heat rains at this tier will just go straight through it most of the time but side of the hull 12 millimeters there eight millimeters there see uh the side skirts are actually thicker than the rear of the hull imagine that 20 29 there 19 there, side of the turret, 16, the boxes at the back are just for storage, so they're not really count as armour, 38 there, rear of the hull, 12, 12, 
remove the turret is a box but if we go here 29 top of the turret 20 top of the hull 20 it's not very well armored is it but it is quite fast it's very much a leopard in this regard we have spaced armor <clears throat> Wait, hang on a minute. This thing does have composite armor? Somebody's been lying to me. Holy crap, it does have spaced armor. Hmm. Well, what do you know about that, then? I don't remember this being on the model, unless I've missed something. Um, yeah. It turns out it does have composite armor, but this is not composite in this... Well, it's not actually. It's spaced armor with an air gap in the middle. So the idea is that the air gap will allow heat rounds to um, the jet of superheated copper that they shoot out of the end when they penetrate armor um, is basically distorted by the fact that there's just open space in the armor so in theory that lowers the um, effectiveness but then you only have 100 millimeters of effective thickness with these anyway so 80 millimeters effective thickness 60 millimeters effective thickness 60 80. Yeah, not great if I'm being completely honest. 12 millimeters. It's b even though you do have this armor, it's basically useless. So don't expect it to save you. Your life in this tank depends on your mobility and your ability to get out of danger in the first place. Don't get shot at. That's that's my advice. Just don't get shot at. So let's take a look at modifications. So you start with the best heat round in the game. 100, no, 650 millimeters of penetration at a flat angle at any range. 324 at 60 degrees at any range. Fantastic heat round. Absolutely fantastic heat round. Your fin stabilized discarding saber round is also a tier one upgrade. Hooray. It does only have 414 millimeters of penetration, however. But this is good enough. Um, I can penetrate the front of a T64A with this round. T64Bs will give you trouble. But then that's what you've got the heat round for. This is more or less for taking out other tanks. Whereas the heat round is almost entirely catered toward taking out T64s. Whether they be the A or the B. We'll have to see how this changes when the T64BV modification is added into the game. But uh, yeah... With 800 millimeters of effective ERA plating, the T64BV is going to be a wor wor uh, worthy adversary for this tank. Everything else, of course, you unlock as you go along. So that's about it, really. So let's uh, jump into the gameplay, and we'll go over how the thing plays. So what have I got for the gameplay footage today? Well, today I am on the Kursk map. Not very often I actually show footage of this map, really, considering it's quite fondly thought of as one of the worst maps in the game by a lot of people I speak to but it is what it is this has actually been on my hard drive for quite a while and I haven't gotten around to I've, I've been prepared to make this video I mean the gameplay footage is the hardest part of doing these reviews two T64s to my front T64B yeah yeah <laughs> No, sorry, a T-64 and an MBT-70. Yeah. Um, I said the heat rounds were good. Anyway, sorry, getting back to the point, rather than distracting myself. I've had this footage on my hard drive for quite a while, and haven't gotten around to making this video yet. The hardest part of actually doing these reviews is getting good enough gameplay footage that it's entertaining for you guys to watch. Like that, for a start. And at the same time finding gameplay footage that I can pick holes in. In order to point out some of the weaknesses of the tank. Because I like to try and review vehicles in the most well well Oh my god. Well rounded. <laughs> there we go. Well rounded way as possible. It doesn't do you guys any favours to watch me get 8 kills in the tank. Think you can do it yourself by doing exactly what I did. When in reality I just got lucky. And getting killed, and then coming back and complaining because you didn't do as well as you thought you would. I don't want that to happen. So, the way I do this is, like I said, I try and get well-rounded well videos. You'd known that that was such a tongue twister. Oof. 
So having taken out the MBT-70 and the T-64B, I am now in the A capture point. There's going to be an awful lot of running around in this match, which is good, because it shows you the manoeuvrability and the speed of the Leopard 2K. Now, as I found out in the comments section of my video and from one of my friends and subscribers who happens to speak far better German than I do, I mean, my German is not fantastic, but it certainly is not brilliant. It certainly isn't crap, but it certainly isn't fantastic either. Um, told me that the K in the Leopard 2K is actually for Canon, not Kyla, as we thought it was. Um, this basically means, or basically identifies this vehicle as being the version of the T of the uh, Leopard 2K that, well, had a cannon rather than a gun slash launcher. At the time the Leopard 2K was produced, or at least being built, the um, general weapon used at the time was this gun that had been mounted onto the KPZ-70 and the MBT-70. So people kind of figured that they were going to go on to using the same gun, which, as we know, is a gun slash launcher. It can fire 80 GMs. The Leopard 2K's gun in War Thunder, however, cannot. This is no bad thing, though. I'm not a huge fan of ATGMs anyway. Um, I still have not ever played a ATGM vehicle. Not a specific ATGM vehicle, anyway. The first vehicle I got with access to ATGMs on it was the BMP-1, which I actually rather enjoy playing. Even though the ATGMs on that thing are dreadful. Or at least the standard ones are. I haven't gotten the upgraded ones yet. So, I am now on my way to reinforce my team at the B capture point. There are quite a few enemy players up near the northern end of the map. Most of the players that come south, um, the two T-64Bs and the MBT-70, I have taken out. But uh, I can't seem to see anything just yet, so we're going to continue going in this direction. As you can see there, roughly 50 kilometers an hour over just fields, basically, which is as to be expected. The vehicle can do 60, 65 kilometers an hour on tarmac, but I don't think I've ever hit 70, at least not when going level. Any tank can hit 70 kilometers an hour going downhill if you throw it off a bit big enough cliff. One of the things I'm not a massive fan of on this heat round at the moment, and this is probably because I've been spoiled by the T-64's fin stabilized discarding Sabo rounds, is the velocity. Now, there's nothing wrong with the velocity on this shell, it's just because I'm not used to it. But the slower velocity of the heat round as a standard round is a little bit misleading to begin with. I fired at vehicles 10 meters away, well that's a bit of an exaggeration, maybe 200 meters away, and missed, but been able to knock out vehicles from over a kilometer away. Curious. Thing is, with fin, with thi with fin stabilized Sabo, Jesus, what's wrong with my English today? <laughs> with thin stabilized Sabo, it's basically point and click at the majority of ranges, out to say 800,000 meters. Which is, which is nice, but uh, that's balanced by the fact that you're not always going to penetrate. Whereas with a heat round, it's, well, this heat round to be specific, you are going to penetrate, no matter what you hit. Obviously, if you fire at vehicles with spaced armor, you're not going to do as much potential damage if you penetrate, assuming you do penetrate. But, um,. It's not going to end badly for you, I can assure you. As a little bit of a side note, I uh, one of the reasons I haven't been uploading a lot of videos recently is because I've recently bought The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Yes, I know, the game is about three years old at this point. The reason I've only just bought it is because it was cheap. Um, I had to go out yesterday and I happened to be walking past a game shop. I've recently got paid, so I thought, what the hell, I'll go in and have a look. I was planning on getting Star Wars Battlefront 2. As it turns out, people decided to skip giving that into chat, giving that into game shops, and just throw it in the bin immediately. So that was a no-go. The Witcher 3 was only £17, which is quite cheap as far as PS4 games go. Um, although for a three-year-old game, it is still kind of expensive, I suppose. But I've heard nothing but good things about it, and I've always wanted to play it. So I figured, what the hell? I might as well buy it. And it's done nothing but absorb my life for the past two or three days. Um, even the side quests are like main quests, man. It, they, they put so much effort into making it more... I mean, even though you walk around a town and notice repeated character AIs 
and repeated like AI appearances it, it just doesn't matter it doesn't break the immersion of the fact that you feel like you're actually walking around where you know in this place as Geralt I do really like it um, some of the missions in particular I've kind of struggled with but it the fighting mechanics in the game are kind of complicated this is fastly becoming a Witcher 3 video I do apologize but I'll, I'll just finish and then we'll crack on the fighting mechanics are kind of strange you can parry like you can in Assassin's Creed but that doesn't work against monsters and stuff that only really works against humans with swords which is fine humans with swords and monsters also have stamina meters but they don't seem to go down very quickly and then there's the fact that you have heavy and light attacks heavy attacks do a shitload of damage light attacks do basically none but are a lot faster and you have to try to do all of this and time it between the enemy's attacks and counter attacks it's really hard I've never played Dark Souls, but if it's anything like that, yeah, I wouldn't manage. It took me ten times to defeat one boss. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this first look at, well, this uh, review of the Leopard 2K. Like, share, and subscribe for more. Thank you very much for watching. And, uh, yeah, we all looking forward to the Leopard 2A4 then?